let's talk money no-nos. There are some things you should just never do with money in order to be kind of a competent adult <laughs> and to build wealth. So we're going to go over some of those things today. And I want you guys to tell me below, have you ever done any of these things with money? Think of it like one of those quizzes where how high of a score did you get with the lowest score being the best possible thing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and I consider myself pretty competent with money. <laughs> I've documented my journey over the past seven years here on YouTube, going from a negative net worth of about $33,000 to almost $100,000 positive net worth. I uh, now own a duplex and have multiple streams of income. I save, I max out Roth IRA, and I do all those other great things that we all want to be able to do with money. And some of my success I can attribute to avoiding some of the bad things that some of us do with money. Now let's consider privilege here for a second. I'm not gonna say never go to a payday loan place because we all know that those are highly predatory things. Nobody goes to a payday loan place because they are thinking that that's a great idea. They're going to one of those places because they need money right now more than they fear the 30% interest that they're gonna have to pay when they pay it back. So let's talk about some things that if you are trying to get better with money that you should try to avoid at all costs. All right, number one, not budgeting. This channel is called Budget Girl. I identify myself as Budget Girl, AKA a girl who budgets. Here's the thing, budgeting doesn't sound fun, but not budgeting is a fairly new practice. Your grandparents and your great grandparents and your great great grandparents all kept a very strict budget probably. It, <laughs> it was essential for them to keep track of all the pennies going in and out because in war times especially, uh, if you are rationing food vouchers, you are keeping track of every single cent. If your grandparents worked in farming or in another industry where they only got paid maybe once or twice a year for crops, they <laughs> made sure to make that money that they made last throughout the year. They did things like canning. They definitely had a much better overall grasp on money, kept a budget. Being paycheck to paycheck by choice and not really knowing where your money's coming in or coming out from, just kind of working and spending and working and spending and never saving for the future is very much something that we started along with debit cards and credit cards. A lack of money management skills is actually pretty new in our society. And if you're watching this channel, I sincerely hope you wanna change that for your family, for you and for your children, because it's not helping us. <laughs> I guarantee you the lower income your grandparents and great grandparents were, the better they were at budgeting because they didn't have as many governmental programs then to help out people who were poor. There were no safety nets in place in society. Currently, there's a lot more <laughs> options for us to make money. There are a lot more options for people who need help that didn't exist previous to this. We're living in a very wealthy time overall. And if we're not keeping track of our own personal money, then we have to take some responsibility for how we're living our lives and the choices that we're making. I highly encourage you to start a budget. And the lower income you are, the more important it is that you keep track of what is coming in and going out and to start to save for the next bad thing that's gonna happen. Cause something's gonna come up and it's gonna kinda knock you down. That is life. I'll have some resources on how to start a budget and my budgeting playlist down below. I started bringing home less than $1,600 a month. And I was able to budget off of that, save, pay off debt, and more. I promise you, I'm not coming down from on high saying like, just budget your money, let them eat cake. I've been there and I've worked my way out of it. And I'm here to help. The second thing to never do with money is to co-sign a loan. Now I know we all want to help our friends, our family, but when banks require a co-signer, it's because they don't have any faith that the person that they're loaning money to is actually going to pay it back. When you co-sign a loan, you put yourself 
on the hook for that money. And if the person who's borrowing it can't pay it back, the bank will come after you. I know we all wanna help our, our friends, our family, especially when they're in a tough time, but if you cannot afford to take on that entire debt, do not co-sign a loan for anyone. This is a put on your own oxygen mask before you put one on somebody else situation here. You have to protect yourself and your livelihood and your money before helping someone else to your own detriment. Now, if someone asks you to co-sign a loan and you can afford to just give them the money and never see it again, cool, sure, that's awesome and incredibly generous, but I would advise you not to co-sign a loan for someone. It'll also probably ruin your relationship. And for anyone saying like, no, this person and I are tight. Like we've been friends since we were kids, blah, 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 blah. When somebody owes you money or when somebody doesn't pay the money that they owe and those creditors come after you, that's gonna strain that relationship. Don't do it. Number three, money no, no. Don't not save for retirement. Retirement seems like a long way out. I am 33 as of today. Saturday, January 30th, and retirement's starting to look a little bit closer for me, but when I started my very first job out of college, I said no to the 401k because I didn't know what it was, and I lost out on that money and all the compound interest that would have come from it forever. Absolutely, it is worth it to educate yourself to start saving now for retirement. I know that's very hard, even if it's just a little, $20 a week, $5 a week. If you can start putting away money for retirement, the compound interest on that is just gonna grow exponentially and you'll have that money there to take care of you. The earlier that you start, the better off you're gonna be because compound interest is just magic. Money no-no number four, not talking to people in your life about money. This could be your parents, this could be your boyfriend, girlfriend, potentially your spouse, this could be your children. If you allow a culture in your family and in your relationships where money is never spoken about, it is going to bite you in the ass one day. <laughs> it's a very hard talk to have with your parents, but I wish I had had one when I was a kid because I went off to college thinking that my family would help me with it and they couldn't and they didn't. Uh, I had to take out loans. I could have been more prepared for that. I could have applied for scholarships. I could have done that. And that's on me. That's partially on me for not asking, for not making sure that I was informed. Even though I was only 17, 18, those are important conversations to have. And if you are that young watching this video, talk to your family about money. If your parents are older and you're older, talk with them about how they're going to handle their retirement. Um, talk with them about their wishes their livelihood maybe they're expecting you to support them in their old age that's probably going to be a combo that y'all are going to have to have <laughs> um, talk about inheritances about wills about medical powers and directives these are important conversations for you to have because there might be a situation where it's a lot harder for you to figure these out and you're going to wish that you had those conversations talking to your partner or spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend about money is also incredibly important. Money fights are the number one cause of divorce. If you and your partner are not on the same page about money, if you don't have the same values when it comes to money, you're asking for a lot of fights in that relationship. And the earlier that you can start talking about money with maybe a boyfriend or a girlfriend, the better that is going to go. Figure out if your potential partner is a spender or a saver, if they have debt, um, how they would like to handle money. Do they budget? These are important conversations to have that should probably be had before y'all are talking about what color table linens you want at the wedding. And it's gonna be more important than that for your entire lives. And your children, I'm the product of never talking about money with your children. Eventually they're going to grow up, they're gonna be behind, and they're gonna have to learn things the hard way on their own. Talk to your children about money. Teach them about the importance of saving you cannot trust school to teach your kid about money. Don't do it. Money no-no number five, not having an emergency fund. Now this is probably one of the most important things. If you don't do anything else in this video, have an emergency fund. And that is some money set aside, even if it's just $1,000, I would recommend more than that. 
It can be your your first or second thing you do with money, but make sure you have some money set aside that you only access in the case of an emergency. And so when the car tire blows, when something else in the car blows, you fall down the stairs and have to go to the hospital, an emergency will happen one day and you're gonna need to tap into that money. And it will be the difference between a crazy level of life altering stress and changes and I've got the money to cover this. I can just focus on fixing whatever this emergency was. Best thing you can do with your money is to set some aside in case of an emergency and do not touch it. You will sleep better at night. I sleep so much better at night knowing that I have an emergency fund that will take care of me if I am laid off, if, I, if I'm ill, if something happens. I have that little nest egg there that will float me for a while until I figure it out. Money no no number six not having a plan or goals set up for your money for when windfalls happen. The same as that emergencies are going to happen every once in a while, windfalls are gonna happen every once in a while. In fact, I got one of my windfalls. I got a windfall today. I got my uh, stimulus check in finally, yes, on January 30th. That is a windfall and if you don't have plans in place and goals set up for your money, then when windfalls happen, that money is just gonna like disappear. It's just gonna go away. You're not gonna know what happened to it. And that's exactly what happened every single semester. I took out extra money in college. I cannot tell you where that money went. Instead, have a big honking money goal. Currently, mine is saving up for my next real estate property. I have had like one big honking money goal that I, if at the end of the day I have any money left for a month, I throw it there so I know where it goes and this grows until it's accomplished. Previous big honking money goals include a house emergency fund, a personal emergency fund, saving up for a house down payment, paying off my debt, saving a first emergency fund. All of those are going to be important things and if you don't set goals for your money, you'll never hit them. Money no-no number seven, tapping your 401k for any reason. If you have retirement accounts, and I know so many people that have made this mistake, those are meant to be used at retirement. There are very few reasons that you should ever tap into an, a retirement account. The reason that you should never tap into any retirement funds or pull out like your 401k is because you are going to be taxed so much on them. There's gonna be an early withdrawal tax. That's probably about 10% of what you pull out. And then you're going to be taxed on that pullout. It's going to be insane. And then if you take out a 401k loan, you're going to have to pay that back. It's just pretend the money doesn't exist in retirement. Don't take it out to buy a house. No, don't take it out to fund a vacation. Don't take it out to spend for any reason. You're going to need that at retirement and it is not worth the money. It's comparable to like a payday loan situation. And most likely you're never gonna pay it back. Just don't take it out in the first place. Money mistake number eight, carrying a balance on your credit card. If you have a credit card, which some people can use responsibly, if you know that you cannot handle a credit card, don't have a credit card. Do everything with debit, it'll, it'll be fine. You can keep your credit score up in other ways, but if you know you overspend on credit, don't use it. If you know that you can use credit responsibly, and pay it off every single month and not overspend when using credit, awesome. But the moment that you carry a credit card balance month to month and have to pay interest on that money, you have lost every single good thing about your credit card. I don't care about the points. I don't care about the cash back. If you are not paying it off in full every single month and just treating it like a debit card, don't do it. Don't use it. You've lost all everything that you would win the moment that you carry a balance month to month. Money no no number eight, spending more than you make. This plays into the credit card a little bit. If you don't know how much you're bringing in and how much you're spending, AKA a budget, um, and you are spending more than you make month over month, you're going to be creating a deficit, likely on your credit cards, which is why you probably won't be able to pay them off in full. But here's the thing, stuff happens life happens and you might need to spend something will happen in a month where you don't have that excess money to spend which means you'll have to tap your emergency fund 
or charge it. But emergencies are different than just regularly spending more than you make. A lot of people do this. <laughs> Someone who makes $100,000 a year but spends $120,000 a year is in a terrible financial position, whereas someone who makes $40,000 a year and spends $30,000 a year is going to have a lot better financial life. A lot of this is lifestyle creep. When you get a raise or a bonus or have a windfall, if you don't have a plan for that, then you just kind of elevate your lifestyle a little bit and often it can get out of hand. So just make sure that you are not spending more than you make every single month. And if you are, then something has to change. Either you need to bring in more income or eliminate some of your expenses because that is not sustainable. I think we're on money no-no number nine, and that is not getting a retirement match. If your employer offers a retirement match, absolutely take advantage of it. It is free money and part of your salary package. So if your employer offers, say, 100% match up to 3%, that is 3% that you're putting in doubled by them. So it's immediately a hundred percent gain on your money. And then you're making money off of that in whatever investment it's put in. There is no other investment in the world that is guaranteed to immediately double. None. You can try to tell me there's one. There isn't. Your 401k match is absolutely one of the first things that you should do. If your employer offers it, there are very few situations where I would say that it's more important for you to have that money instead of having it grow for the future. Do whatever you have to, to make sure that you can live on, you know, that 3% less so that you can activate that match. It is very important for your financial health and I skipped it at my first job and I will never get that money back, ever. Money no-no number 10 is buying a new car. Some of you guys aren't gonna like this, but a new car is one of the worst investments you can make. As we all know, it loses so much of its value the moment you drive off the lot and make it a used car. If you are financing a car, that is how usually you end up upside down on it because you cannot go and sell that used car and pay off your note. You can purchase wonderful condition used cars that are only a couple of years old and save so much money. Personally, I like to buy my cars with cash. I understand that not everyone is in a situation, at least when they're starting their journey to be able to pay off their car note and purchase cars in cash from there on out, but it is so key. Not having a car note can be the difference between you super succeeding with money and constantly being trapped in like under all of these bills. I would also say do not trade in your car up every couple of years. That's how you end up with a huge car debt. And there are a lot of people that do that because they think that they need a newer car um, and they just fold the payment from their old car into the loan and they end up with this huge, huge payment and huge car debt for cars they don't even have anymore. And it just absolutely can sink people financially. Usually what ends up happening is, you know, they'll something will happen to the car before they've paid it off and they'll just owe car debts for cars that they don't even have anymore. It is not a good way to live. Leasing is the exact same thing. Horrible idea. Now, if your employer uh, pays for a lease for you, fine. <laughs> but when that lease is up, back the car. Don't lease a car unless somebody else is paying for it. Never. And then our final money no-no is paying bank fees, paying late fees, paying overdraft fees. All of these are hugely avoidable. Do not bank somewhere where they are paying you or asking you for money every single month just to bank there. The bank is using your money to make them wealthier and charging you for the pleasure. There are way too many high yield savings accounts, high yield checking accounts out there. Even though right now you're only going to yield like 0.6%, do not pay a bank to keep your money there. I'll have some better banks down below. Um, online banking is easy. I've done it for years. I do not have a physical bank. There are free ATMs that I use to get money if I need. It has never been an issue. I keep lots of sinking funds and I make money off of my money every single month. As far as overdraft and late fees, you can avoid those if you have a budget and you stay on top of your money. It is very important. Those will sink you. The banks make billions, yes, be billions of dollars off of the people who need money the most, people who have 
low income that don't have a lot of money in checkings, don't have a lot of money in savings. It is a pure and simple tax on the poor. And it is avoidable in most cases if you're willing to work on a budget and work on managing your money so that you don't have those little fees. I've paid them before. I haven't paid them in years. It is the worst way to spend your money. It's just giving it to the bank for them loaning you a couple of bucks. All right, well that is 11 money mistakes that no one should ever make if they want to be in control of their money and their wealth. I would love to know if A, you've ever made any of these mistakes, because I certainly have and I don't anymore, or if there are other, any other money mistakes that you think I should have included in this video. What are your major money no-nos? What are the things that you will never do again because you know that it's a bad money decision. So this video, I don't want anyone to feel any guilt or like I'm accusing them of anything in this video. I've done a lot of these, but I now know that avoiding these things, these funny no-nos is how I want to live and how I've been able to do a lot better with my money since. So, all right. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like it and also subscribe. It helps my channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye.